guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Ariella and I make videos about medical students and my life as a second year medical student. So I actually got a request on one of the comments in one of my videos to make a video about expectations that you should have as a first year medical student going into medical school. And I actually thought that was a fantastic video idea because personally, I had no idea what to expect when I was going to medical school. And so orientation was kind of a mess for me. It worked out just fine, but I thought it would be useful to tell you a little bit about what I experienced and just what you should potentially expect at your medical school. Of course, every med school is different, but I think the fears and the nervousness that a lot of first year medical students have coming into school is probably pretty universal. So I'm just going to talk about the things that I was feeling and the things that you might be feeling on your way in. All right, so first and foremost, if you are an incoming first year medical student, Congratulations, take a breath. The hard part is over, sort of. <laughs> medical school will definitely be difficult and the path to medicine in general, I think has a lot of hurdles that you need to jump over. But one of the major hurdles for sure is actually getting into medical school. Because once you get into med school, it's not so much about your grades and your performance anymore. As long as you pass and you make it through successfully, you're going to become a physician. So something that I want you to keep in mind as you're going through medical school is that it's not going to be all about your grades now. Of course, grades are important. They're one of the lower things on the list of important things that residencies tend to look at. Make sure that you're studying your hardest and you're trying to do well in your classes, but know that you might not get 100% on every test and that's totally okay. I personally use the subjects that I'm good at and the subjects that I'm bad at as a potential gauge for things that I might want to study in the future because if I am particularly good at one subject, like I really like the immune system and I love studying the immune system and I did really well in that course, that might be a potential area that I could go into or at least look into during my third and fourth years. Part of having a healthy mindset going into medical school is definitely having a nice relaxing summer before you start. Enjoy your last summer before you begin. Medical school is going to be a lot of fun, but it's also going to be a lot of very hard work. You can definitely easily burn out. So personally, I would not recommend doing any studying. If you're working a clinical job or a different type of job, that's totally fine over the summer. Just make sure you're doing something that isn't studying your butt off before you even get to school. And make some time for your friends and family as well. I know that's a little bit hard right now given the fact that a lot of people are not comfortable traveling and social distancing is kind of still in place in certain areas. Do what you can with the people you love as much as you are comfortable with. So when you enter your orientation, if you have one, it's gonna kind of feel like college all over again. Nobody knows anybody really, so everyone's gonna be trying to make friends and make sure you put yourself out there and talk to everyone. Personally, I'm a little bit of an introvert. I can kind of bounce back and forth between being super introverted and not wanting to talk to anyone and being super extroverted and loving to have conversations with other people. And so I was kind of having an introverted week, so I didn't really put myself out there until after orientation. And if you can avoid that, I definitely would recommend avoiding that because it's so much nicer to have those interactions in a relatively stress-free environment before you're studying. And I definitely had some days that were better than others, and those days were definitely my happiest days during orientation. Everyone is really, really nice and they're just trying to make friends and they're probably just as nervous as you are. It really is like undergrad all over again if you have an orientation week. Speaking of the orientation week, I would listen to the faculty, but honestly, a lot of what they said in orientation went over my head and got repeated anyway later in the semester. Most likely what they're gonna be saying to you is going to be repeated in the future, so I wouldn't recommend taking notes or anything. Just sit and listen and enjoy the time that you have. Maybe get to know the faculty if they have like smaller group activities. A lot of the times they will have upperclassmen running these programs, like second year medical students get to know them too they will absolutely be your best 
friend when it comes to navigating the next year. And I'll talk a little bit about that afterward, how you can take what the M2s are saying and utilize that information because it can be a lot. So I know I just said don't take notes on all of that, but there is one thing that I would potentially mark down in your phone and that would be to pay attention to the mental health resources offered by your school. So personally, I never had to use them, but I do know exactly where to go if I ever need to use them in the future. If I start to feel overwhelmed or if something happens in my life where I no longer feel like I can competently take care of my schoolwork and deal with my home life at the same time, I know that it's better for me to go to the mental health resources earlier rather than letting everything pile up and kind of crash and burn at the end and then going to them and saying like, help me, I have no idea what to do. They'll be much more effective if you use them over the long term. So at this point, you most likely know how to manage your own schedule. Make sure that you plan out your days with some sort of discipline in your schedule. Go to class if you need the structure in your day, or if you don't, I would recommend sitting in the library for the first week or two and doing your work there, just so that you set the expectation that for these eight hours, I'm doing schoolwork and I'm not going to be doing anything else. Because surprisingly, well, if you're a class goer, you might feel like you have a little bit more of a rigid schedule. If you decide not to go to classes, you're going to have a lot more flexibility with your schedule and it can be difficult to manage that without completely letting everything fall to the wayside. You wanna set those expectations early so that way, even if you're not going to class, you know what you should be doing and what kind of work you should be doing and when you should be doing it. I think something that a lot of people expect going into med school is that it's going to be an absolute crap ton of work and believe me it is but you'd be surprised how variable and flexible your schedule is as a medical student at least in the first two years obviously i can't speak for clinical rotations i don't know anything about them at all there's a lot of flexibility in your schedule at the end of the day and it's kind of up to you to decide what you're going to do when and so for me personally i try to maintain a day schedule kind of like i was working all day, like if I was working an eight hour day, that's the amount of time that I would spend in class and studying. And then for me also, I don't do any work after 9 p.m. because I like to maintain a very strict, healthy sleeping schedule. That's really important for me. It's not necessarily important for everyone. A lot of people can function on variable levels of sleep, but I like to get my sleep at the same hours every night. And so that's something that I like to work into my schedule. So I don't do any work after 9 p.m. and I do all my work during the days for eight hours. And then that also gives me a little bit of flexibility on the weekend to either visit my friends or visit my boyfriend or go home and visit my family. I tend not to have to do as much work on the weekends. Yeah, I think you'll probably be surprised how much time you actually have in medical school. It's important to utilize that time efficiently. And that's all what a lot of study techniques focus on in medical school is efficiency, because there's a large volume of information that you need to know. And in order to be able to learn it in an adequate amount of time, you need to use efficient study methods so there are a ton of different options for you and that's something that you kind of have to work through and decide on your own but personally I spent a lot of time studying in ways that did not help me with long-term retention or even short-term retention at all and obviously that was a waste of time it wasn't very efficient so as long as you're able to do your studying efficiently you can spend a lot of extra time in medical school doing things that you like, and that's a good way to maintain a healthy work-life balance. At the end of the day, whatever study method works for you, use that, but it's going to take a little bit of adjusting in the beginning of medical school, and there's pretty much no perfect way to get it exactly right the first time. And also know that your study methods are going to vary greatly between subjects and even within subjects, depending on the type of information that you're learning. All right, it's going to feel like you have no idea what you're doing. That's okay. It's also going to feel like everybody else knows exactly what they're doing. That's also okay. This is very classic imposter syndrome that I think a lot of medical students go through and it can manifest itself in so many different ways. But just know that everybody is probably just as confused as you are. It's kind of like everyone is confused together and nobody really knows what's going on, but everyone has to pretend that they know what's going on because that's a skill that you actually utilize later on when you're on rotations and you're seeing patients. You're never going to know everything and so being confident in what you do know is so important. So don't let imposter syndrome become the center of your life because it can be really debilitating as a student and just know that everyone else is probably struggling just as hard. And on that note, 
try to lift up your fellow students and help them out if you can. I think it's really important to foster a very collaborative environment in medical school and I think that would be the ideal change in healthcare that I would like to see in the future is much more collaboration between students and doctors etc rather than competition and I think historically it's been very competitive but I find that I thrive in a collaborative environment and I've said this on my channel before so if you see that someone's struggling or if you have a resource that you wouldn't mind sharing I would highly recommend doing that because it's going to help out a lot of people Okay, so last up I'm going to talk about like what to expect academically your first year. I kind of touched on a little bit of this stuff earlier, but make sure that you don't go into first year expecting to get 100% on every exam. In my opinion, you'll just be gearing yourself up for disappointment, and I'm not saying that you're necessarily going to do horribly, but it is important to remember that the content in medical school is going to be a pretty difficult level and a very large volume. So likelihood is that you might have not reviewed a specific topic as well as a different student, but then you reviewed a different topic a lot more than they did. So it's very variable and just make sure that you're proud of your performance no matter what. I mean, you're in medical school. That's a big achievement in and of itself. Lastly, I wanna chat about the utilization of resources from your fellow medical students, M2s. This is super important and it was personally very important for me in terms of my success in medical school. So actually one of my roommates was an M2 and this isn't totally necessary. You don't need to be a roommate with an M2 in order to get this information because a lot of the times I find that medical students are extremely generous people and they want to help people get into med school and get through med school because they had to go through it themselves. And so if anything, they're going to almost bombard you with resources and advice and information that you can use. So here's what I would recommend. If you ever have a specific question, just ask a second year and they will give you a specific answer. If it's about like technical things. If you're looking for study techniques, I would kind of ask several different M2s that you come across and you'll see just how variable study techniques can be in medical school. And what is successful for one person doesn't necessarily work very well for another person. So in that case, I would use sort of like a polling technique of the M2s and see what kind of jives with you and you'll develop your study techniques as you go along. And I remember hearing that from YouTubers that were med students and being so frustrated because I just wanted someone to tell me like, what is the perfect way to study for medical school? And when they said there wasn't one, I was so irritated because I wanted to start out perfectly. But now that I've gone through it, I completely understand what they're saying in terms of there's no perfect way because there really isn't. You're learning so many different types of information that no one way of studying is going to be perfect for every person or perfect for every subject. And then lastly, in terms of the M2 resources, a lot of people are gonna send you a lot of different things. So what I would do is I would make an organized Google Drive folder and make sure that you're keeping track of all those different resources that people send you. Make sure that you don't have a ton of Duplicates. This is something that I definitely wish I did first year. I just got a bunch of emails and I put stars on the emails because we used Gmail suite on the ones that were super important or had super useful resources. But I wish I had actually organized them onto my Google Drive so that they could have been a little bit more accessible to me. So if you have the time, I would recommend doing that. And then over time, you'll discover which resources you like to use and which you don't. My personal recommendations are Sketchy, Boards and Beyond, First Aid. I've heard a lot of good things about Pathoma, but personally I haven't actually used it. And obviously you guys know I recommend at least attempting to use Anki to study. I really like it, even though note cards are like the bane of my existence, they make me a better student. So I kind of have to accept that that's part of my study routine now. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to say about expectations for medical school or going into med school. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will always answer. If you're not comfortable leaving your question publicly, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I reply to everyone who sends me a message on there. Now that I'm an M2, I get it. I would love to help and I do love to help incoming medical students because I know that I felt very insecure and scared when I was going into medical school and there was pretty much no reason for me to feel like that. So I want you guys to be super comfortable going in and ready and excited for med school because it is really exciting. All right, with that said, I'm gonna head out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.